Hello, I'm Norman Wahlberger. We're at the University of New South Wales. This is question 15 in chapter 5 of our linear algebra problem notes. It's suppose that A is a square matrix. Then show that B, which is A plus A transpose, is symmetric. That C, which is A times A transpose, is symmetric. And that D equals A minus A transpose is skew symmetric. So I have to remind you of a few definitions and terminology and some basic facts having to do with transposes and symmetric matrices. All right, so recall that uh, if, say, the matrix A is 2, 1, 3, 4, 5, 6, then the transpose of that matrix is obtained by flipping the matrix over sort of on a diagonal so that the rows of the original matrix become the columns of the transpose or conversely that the columns of the original matrix become the rows of the transpose. Right, that's called the transpose. And the uh, main facts that you need to know about the transpose are the following that first of all this is a linear operation so if you take the transpose of lambda times a matrix you're going to get lambda times the transpose and if you have two matrices A and B and you take their transpose then you get the transpose of A plus the transpose of B and a more subtle fact is that if you have two matrices A and B and you take their transpose, then you get the transpose of B times the transpose of A. So it's a product of the transposes but in the opposite order. And one more property that's kind of obvious but it's important to write it down too is that if you take a matrix and you take its transpose and then you take its transpose again, well then you get back the original matrix A. All right, so those are basic facts about the transpose of a matrix. In terms of notation, sometimes we like to write a matrix in terms of its entries. So sometimes we write something like A equals the matrix whose ijth entry is Aij. Well, in that case, the transpose can be written as the matrix whose ijth entry is aji. All right, that's another way of thinking about the transpose. And some definitions. A is symmetric. What does that mean? It means that A equals its own transpose. For example, uh, 1, 3, 3, minus 4. You take the transpose of that and you get the same matrix. And a somewhat less familiar definition, but also quite important in physics, is that A is skew symmetric precisely when A transpose equals minus A. Okay, so for an example of that would be uh, the matrix zero, 1, minus 1, 0. If you take the transpose of that, then you get the negative of the matrix. If you take the transpose of this one, you get the matrix. If you take the transpose of this one, you get the negative of the matrix. This one is symmetric, and this one is skew symmetric. All right, so those are the basic facts that you need to know about transposes and symmetric and skew symmetric matrices. Now let's have a look at the problem. So suppose that A is a square matrix. So that means it's n by n matrix for some n. We need that in order for these various expressions to uh, be defined. So you can't add A and A transpose unless they're of the same size. And if A is not a square matrix, then A and A transpose are going to be different sizes and you're not going to be able to add them. All right, so then let's have a look at um, B. Okay? We want to know whether B is symmetric. Then B transpose is A plus A transpose 
transpose. Okay? So we're looking at B, which is defined this way, and we're looking at its transpose. So there's its transpose. Now, the linear property of the transpose means that this is the transpose of the first fellow plus the transpose of the second fellow. So that's A transpose transpose. But we know that when we take the transpose of the transpose, we get back the original matrix. A transpose transpose is A. And what we end up getting is just B. A plus A transpose is the same as A transpose plus A. So B transpose equals B. So B is symmetric. That's the definition of being a symmetric matrix, that the transpose of the matrix equals the matrix itself. All right, let's have a look at the second part. Let's have a look at C. Let's look at its transpose. C transpose equals, well, C is A times A transpose. And so we're supposed to take the transpose of that. How do we take the transpose of a product? Well, it's equal to the transpose of the second element, so A transpose transpose, times the first element transpose. Remember, we interchange the order when we're taking the transpose of a product. Okay, and now this is just A times A transpose, for the same reason that we did up there, that the transpose of the transpose is A. And so we see that we end up recovering C. C transpose equals C. So C is symmetric. And finally, let's have a look at D. So if we take the transpose of D, that's A minus A transpose transpose. Then, according to the linear property of the transpose, this will be the transpose of A minus the transpose of A transpose. And again, as in the previous cases, the A transpose transpose is just A. So we get A transpose minus A, and then we compare that to the original D. Well, it's not exactly D, but it's pretty close to it. If we factor out a minus 1, we can write this as minus A minus A transpose. And now we see that that's just minus D. So, conclusion, D is skew symmetric. Because its transpose is equal to minus itself. So this is an important uh, problem because it shows us that if we want to cook up symmetric matrices, one way of doing it is to take a general square matrix and add it to its transpose. It's a very general way of getting a symmetric matrix. And if we want a skew symmetric matrix, we can take an arbitrary matrix A and subtract, take the difference between A and its transpose, we get a skew symmetric matrix. And in fact, this is another way of getting a symmetric matrix. The product of A times A transpose is symmetric.